Fourth of July weekend, nearly 70 powerboats, 35 years of racing. It's great to be back in Sarasota. Welcome to the 35th annual Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Festival. Not only is it 4th of July weekend, but this is also the big one. The Monaco Grand Prix of the powerboat racing world, if you will. And 2019 is an exciting year because for the first time, the OPA and P1 have come together under one roof to create a six round series that will champion the overall best of the best. And we've got racers from all around the globe because these guys have traveled from far and wide coming from New Zealand, Australia, Italy, the United Kingdom, the United Arab Emirates, and of course the good old US of A. And after two rounds, we have seen some phenomenal action. They went side by side, gunnel to gunnel, on the crashing surf of Cocoa Beach. And then they put the hammers down on the flat, fast water of the Lake of the Ozarks. And I can tell you, well, the racing's been fierce. We are underway here in Cocoa Beach. We have Ampon challenging AMH. Pro Floor's checkered flag coming out. Look at Geico come up alongside. Wow, look at that side by side, and that is really hairy. And the white flag is out. Geico is in the lead. Congratulations to the Geico team. Well, some awesome action there, and the great news is there's plenty more where that came from here this weekend in Sarasota, and we're going to be bringing you action from three races across six different classes. So hold on to your hats, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Everybody wants to win that. Everybody wants to be that guy who's up top. Basically, for years now, Sarasota has been the Indy 500 of offshore power racing, so it would be just out of this world to win this weekend. To win, to bring home a gold would be phenomenal. It's our hometown race, got a lot of friends, family in here. It's just fantastic. This is a really important year for us, and you know, we need to win this race. It's the one everyone wants to win, and we're up for it. The Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Festival is just that, a huge festival where racing is just part of the story. And one lady who knows this event better than anyone is Lucy Nicandri. I've been involved in the Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix 33 of the 35 years. It's always benefited a charity, and we are one of the only race sites in the world that is run by a charity and one of the longest sites that I know of uh, going on its 35th year. Uh, Suncoast Charities for Children provides funding to five local nonprofits here in the community. These nonprofits serve children, teens, and adults with special needs. The great thing is over the years from the proceeds raised, $20 million worth of facilities have been built, that these facilities um, are offering services to over 5,000 clients annually. The Grand Prix is a tradition for this area, and because there's a charity behind it and we're the driving force, uh, what started as a race has morphed into a 10-day festival where we have over 36 of the upwards of 70 teams here in the community that will be on display downtown Sarasota. It's right on Main Street. We'll have live music, but it gives the public and, and the people in the community a chance to come out and meet the race team, see the boats up close. It's a unique experience that we like to offer the community and have fun at the same time. Well, it certainly is a great cause. It's been putting sunny smiles on lots of children's faces for many, many years and hopefully many more to come as well. But it wasn't quite the same at the kickoff block party the other night where the Florida weather did what it sometimes does and the heavens opened. Didn't dampen the spirits though and good news is the sun is shining here today. Time to focus on our first class, the Supercats. Now, these canopied catamarans weigh in at a whopping 9,600 pounds, and with twin 750 horsepower engines at the back, you'll see them reaching speeds of 140 miles per hour. 
And after the opening two rounds, it was Pro Floors and AMH Motorsport who took the wins, which means the point standings have ended up looking like this. So on 119, it's CJ Grant Racing. Matched on 160, you've got WHM Motorsports and Performance Boat Center. And your top three look like this then. On 162, it's MCON. Above them, it's AMH Motorsports on 173. And leading the way on 200 points are Pro Floors. Not much in it then. So let's have a look and see what the teams think of that as we grab a word with some of them. Oh, we like it. It's been a really great year so far. We just come in, coming off of a, a first place win out of Lake Ozark. So we're obviously trying to repeat that um, here in Sarasota this weekend. And uh, you know, it's a really tight points uh, race right now. Well, we've been in this boat together for a year. Uh, we spent a year in a V bottom together prior to this. Um, so far in this boat, we've come a long way together because I've raced some cats, Aaron hasn't. So it's been a, been a little bit of a learning curve for him, but he's doing real well. I mean, obviously we're coming off a win last week and I think we stand a real good chance here this weekend. We're, we're still searching for that first win, so what better place to do it than Sarasota? You know, our boat's uh, not quite as good in the smooth water. So we're hoping it's gonna be rough out here and give us a good shot. Sarasota is an awesome event. And uh, without the amount of boats and things that are going on, it's just, you don't get near the competitiveness near the show for the fans. We had a good run here in Sarasota last year. You know, we took out a victory here last year. It's a uh, hometown for Grant here as well. So it'll be really nice to take another victory. You know, hey, these points are still pretty close. So, uh, you know, another victory would make us feel a lot more comfortable. We set a precedence in Cocoa Beach. Pro Force sees that they're coming, trying to put the hammer down. If we all make the right prop choice on the day, we're going to be gunnel to gunnel, pickle fork to pickle fork. There's no doubt about it. Well, best of luck to all of those guys. And as we were just hearing, it certainly is going to be a close race. On any given day, any one of them could take it. So let's head out now and have a look at the course that they'll be taking on with your race commentator, Mine Sambom. Thanks, Kevin. Let's take a look at the course here in Sarasota, Florida, 6.2 miles. They've got a long run diagonally towards the beach, the start finish line right in front of the Lido Beach Resort, a long run between two and three, then a kind of a short turn at three and four, back to that long diagonal run to the start finish line, 10 laps here in Supercat. Okay, Martin, here we go with the start of our Supercat race. AMH drawing that lucky pole position. MCON in the center and WHM in the third, and we have a green flag. They are underway as it looks like MCON getting a little bit squeezed by WHM Motorsports and AMH. AMH has the inside lane as we go on board Pro Floors with Valder and Bruggerman as they jump out to an early lead. Now, they're required to maintain their lanes going through turn one, but look at the jump from Pro Floors. They've got about a two-boat length lead as they go into the first turns at the north end of the race course. Martin, I'll tell you, there has to be a lot of trust amongst them drivers. No doubt. They're flying those boats. They're running 130 miles an hour at this point. They, these boats accelerate quick as we watch MCON kind of squares the turn off a little bit. But AMH Motorsports had the inside lane. They got around and they made up some ground. They've now moved into the lead as Pro Force went way wide on the turn. They're supposed to maintain their lane, but they went a little wider than they needed to as we see Performance Boat Center now currently running in fourth. Martin, one of the things that I've noticed that after that front went through, it looks like things have kind of laid down for these guys here. Whoa, I saw MCON get the boat really loose, so it is laid down, but this is the most treacherous part of the race course is there's a swell, and they're running along a quarter, but there you see how it's shaken out right now. MCON running in second place. That wake immediately to their right is AMH Motorsports. They are your current leader as MCON goes to the inside of AMH. They're trying to find that inside lane on that right-hand turn coming up along the beach. MCON running a lot looser. Here we see our battle for fourth place, Performance Boat Center as WHM Motorsports goes through the rooster tail. MCON stays on the inside of AMH Motorsports, currently running in second place. AMH out front. It makes a big difference when you have that inside lane and you make a good turn at turn one. But look at Pro Force coming up hard on the outside of MCON. Well, you got to wonder if AMH is going to uh, leave a lane there for uh, MCON as MCON tries to work to the inside right now of Pro Floors. Yep, and they ultimately decide MCON's got to go through that rooster tail. They didn't want to square the turn off as tight, so they now move to the outside of AMH. That pushed. Uh, that they really didn't give anywhere for pro floors to go. They had to go a little wider. That cost them some ground. But now MCON is battling on the outside of AMH as they head towards the west, getting ready to make that turn to run north along the long straightaway. 
towards that short turn up at the up at the north end of the race course. And now MCON gets by AMH Motorsports. Wow, great job there by MCON. Uh, great driving. Let's talk a little bit about those drivers. You know, these guys have got to fly these boats. They're a tunnel boat, so they're ultimately packing a lot of air. And when they come into this part of the race course, this is the most treacherous part. AMH Motorsports has the inside, so they've got the shorter way around the race course, but MCON on the outside is carrying more boat speed. You saw they had that bigger rooster tail, so they got more RPM going as MCON swings wide. They're trying to carry boat speed, and look at how loose these boats are. There you really see uh, that is uh, WHM Motorsports in the back just bopping as they go through. And we look on board Pro Floors that's currently running in third place. It is definitely bumping. They've got a little bit of a following quarter as Pro Floors has now moved to the inside. MCON on the outside again, running down and getting by AMH. But AMH is going to have that inside lane as they make the turn to come along the beach. But MCON is going to have a solid lead crossing the start-finish line. Well, I'll tell you, it doesn't look like any boat's really pulling too far ahead of uh, any of the other boats. Uh, what are these boats powered by? These boats all have a pretty strict rule requirement. They're naturally aspirated, 750 horsepower engines. They also have a rev limit on it, but they can have engines built by any builders. AMH makes a great turn. They didn't give Pro Floors anywhere to go. Pro Floors had to go wide. As we look at Performance Boat Center, they're currently running in fourth place. They're actually running on a set of motors that have seven races on it. Their motors didn't get here in time for the race. They had a problem with the engine builder, and now they're running older motors, but still holding their own. Currently running in fourth as we go on board Pro Floors, and you see their view. And we are looking at Pro Floors right now as we get ready to go to a break. We'll be back with more racing here in Sarasota at the 35th Annual Sarasota Grand Prix, brought to you by Sarasota County. Welcome back to Sarasota for the 35th annual Sarasota Grand Prix. Martin, a great view here from the Lido Beach Resort. Great racing going on out there. And that was the view of our leader looking back at second place, MCON. Whoa, getting loose on that diagonal part of the race course, coming back towards the beach there in first place, AMH in second. Coming up hard on the inside is Pro Floors. They're trying to get that good line to get around AMH. AMH has been picking fantastic lines around the pins, not giving anybody a chance to dive to the inside. As we look at them getting ready to go across the wake of MCON, as it looks like MCON is going to tap that buoy and go by pretty close and forced AMH to run right on the inside of the wake as they cross the buoy, getting ready to go across the start finish line area here in front of the Lido Beach Resort. Well, Pro Floors, Wayne and Grant definitely have their work cut out for them. You can see uh, not too rough out there for these boats. What kind of sizes are these boats right here? These boats are up to 42 feet in length, so they're they're big catamarans, and these boats are fast, and they love rougher water. Uh, right now, it's not as rough, and I got a chance to talk to the guys during the testing, and they said it was really rough on the testing days, which is kind of what we expect in Sarasota. This is great water for these boats. AMH continue to hold on second, and they really just see how close they get to that turn. It really doesn't allow Pro floors to dive to the inside and carry a line. Pro floor, a different kind of a catamaran. That is an MTI. You've got skaters on the race course. Those are the two primary catamaran manufacturers that we see out there, but all the motors are fairly spec, about 750 horsepower. Single carburetor, so these respond the way guys are used to responding as opposed to what we're going to see in Class 1 that are running a turbocharged motor, so you have a little bit of a lag. And there you see just exactly what these boats run like. I mean, a little bit of loose, and they are instantly airborne. General rule of thumb, if you lose sight of the horizon, it's not going to end well. Great control there by AMH as they get the boat settled back down. Here comes MCON. You see just how loose they're running on the very back section of that boat, packing all that air in the front. What makes these boats fast is there's a wing, basically shaped going through the tunnel. They compress air, so it ultimately tricks the boat into thinking it's lighter than it really is. But look at this battle right now. AMH on the inside. Pro Force coming up on the outside. They're making a run. Kind of hard to tell at this point if AMH is slowing down or Pro Force is just getting by. I'm thinking that maybe AMH is starting to have a little bit of a problem as they're slowing down here comes pro floors they now move into second yeah wayne and grant doing a great job there in the pro floors boat you can see amh still uh, trying to work to the inside but i would imagine pro pro floors is going to move over i, I think they're going to probably return the favor that amh has been doing kind of going tight around the turns as we go back to mcon they're now way out front these guys got to be thrilled you just see how loose that boat is going across the start finish line they know they're out front and they don't want to let anybody catch up mcon out front right now as they cross the start finish line and look on the back straightaway now as we cut back to performance boat center they're now 
driving by AMH, so I think AMH definitely having a problem. Performance Boat Center now moves into third place. Wow, great job there by Performance Boat Center. And uh, as you were pointing out, what do you think could be going wrong? It looked like uh, possibly a bilge issue. Well, it looked like they had a little less water coming out of the right side motor as MCON has crossed the start finish line. They're going to take the win. We saw Pro Floors going by the start finish line. They're going to come in second. You know, we saw that little bit less water coming out the right side motor from AMH as they now come by in fourth place. So tough day for those guys. They were out front and they dropped back, end up in fourth place. Not a bad way to finish the day, but certainly not where they wanted to be. Yeah, exactly. And you can see probably a little bit dejected. Meanwhile, I bet they are celebrating inside that canopy. Oh, there's no doubt. These guys are going to be celebrating for the next few days as we watch WHM Motorsports come by. They are going to take fifth place here in Sarasota. Well, some great racing here in our Super Cat class. As Team Brodko comes by in sixth place, this is the first race for this new Super Cat team. And again, they finish in the hunt. So, Kevin, you were right on. Any of these boats could have won all very close here in Sarasota. Well, the canopy's up on MCON and let the celebration begin for Tyson and Tyler. Let's take a look at the results and see how everyone finished. Ultimately, the win is going to go to MCON. These guys are going to be happy this weekend. Pro Floors take second, followed by Performance Boat Center, AMH Motorsports, Broadco, and WHM Motorsports. Duke made the top step of the podium. He must be thrilled. Absolutely. It was a great race today. Uh, the water conditions were just right. We had the boat set up very good. Uh, competition throughout the entire race, just a really good battle. Yeah, it was very close. Uh, you know, just looking back at them, they were right there with us the whole time. Well, even without a win here in Sarasota, Pro Floors maintains their overall points lead, followed by MCON, AMH Motorsports, and only a four-point separation to Performance Boat Center, followed by WHM Motorsports and CJ Grant Racing. Back to Sarasota for this explosive 4th of July weekend and the annual Powerboat Grand Prix Festival, where a record number of entries means that we see nearly 70 boats running here. And for the uninitiated, all the different shapes, sizes, and classes could be confusing. But I'm pleased to say the man standing alongside me, our commentator and former racer, Martin Sanborn. Hopefully, sir, you can shed some light on this. And first, it's good to see you here. Another, another festival. Absolutely. It's good to be with you. 35th annual time here in Sarasota. I've been here for probably 20 of those races. It's good to be here. But you're right, it's going to be a little confusing for the first time watching this. We've got two V-bottom classes, like you yeah. said, the Super V Extreme and the Pro Stock V. These boats are all 28 to 32 feet, same boats, canopy configuration. But the uh, Super V Extremes are allowed to have a little bit more horsepower. They can build their own engines as opposed to the Pro Stock Vs are all running sealed Mercury engines. So right. very competitive between those two classes, but a big disparity in overall speed. But then you talk about the Super Stock casts, they're really easy to see. They're all catamarans, but they're all running the Mercury 300 XS Opti. Those boats all run upwards of 115 miles an hour as opposed to the mid-90s for the V-bottoms. Both of these classes in what could be really bumpy water is going to really be interesting to watch. Well, it should be great to watch, and uh, you understood that, right? Well, anyway, if you didn't, let's go and see what some of the teams have got to say this morning. Sarasota is like a, a, a preempt to what the worlds will be. But the, the entire event here is put on so well by the organizers because it's done, you know, through the city with the volunteers and, and the people that have done it for years and years that it, it just makes it so much easier for us. Anybody in our class is uh, capable of winning uh, because, you know, we have the same motor, same weight. It's just the two guys that are in the boat. I've got Lauren Leibel in the boat with me. He's an amazing driver. He's won several championships and some big stuff, and he's decided to jump in and try it with me, and uh, we just love it here. We work on boats and test boats every day for many of years, and uh, so we work hand-in-hand -hand together on all kinds of projects, and uh, it's been awesome in the boat together. Yeah. yeah. Course is tough. Uh, everybody thinks, you know, if it's not blowing, there's not that much uh, there as far as waves, but the, there's always a constant roller here, and it's, it's tough. Well, hopefully we're going to win. That's the goal, first place. 
Uh, we don't go for second. I mean, we're happy when we do, but uh, the, the goal is to win, so that's what we're going to try to do. We would, we're to win Sarasota, we would be extremely happy. Steve, great to see you here. It's another Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix, the 35th annual event and the 35th race that you've been to. You've been to all of these. That's some record. It started a lot smaller than this. This is a great turnout for the race this year. It's always great to come to Sarasota. You know, it's a hometown race for us, and we have a lot of people here that have, you know, been following our team ever since my dad started it back in 85. So it's great to come back to the hometown, race in front of the fans, and it's, you know, what we do on 4th of July weekend. Tell us a quick uh, word about the class that you're racing in, Steve. Super V Extreme. Uh, basically, uh, 32 is the maximum length. Um, we have spec motors and a weight also that we have to meet. Um, horsepower range is usually right around 600 to 630, and uh, the boat weight's 4750, depending upon how many steps you have in the bottom. So, um, very competitive class, and um, it's it's very uh, very competitive. Mm -hmm. And there's another class that sounds a bit similar to this, your Super V Extreme, but there's also V Extreme. What's the difference? Uh, v Extreme uh, is a longer boat and they have two motors. Well, the crews are busy behind me launching the boats and Martin has headed up to his commentary position. So let's go and join him and Mikey Young for the race start. All right, let's take a look at the race course again. 6.2 miles, they're running clockwise rotation, a long runway between two and three, kind of a short turn at three and four for a diagonal run towards the start finish line right in front of the Lido Beach Resort. Well, here we go with the start here. Uh, combined class, we've got the Super Stock, the Super V Extreme, the V Extreme, and the Pro Stock class in a three stage start. Hammerhead drew the inside lane, wide open throttle in lane two. Lane three is Killer B, and we have a green flag. As Frank and Jimmy's propellers off to the light, there's Killer B. They're in the third lane as we're on board Allen Lawn Care as they make their way towards the north end of the course. Hammerhead gets a good jump. Killer B is trying to make a move in all that rooster tail spray there. As Allen Lawn Care moving their way up and they're running side by side with FJ Propeller as Frank and Jimmy's moves ahead of them heading towards the north end turn. Yeah, FJ Propeller doing a great job there grabbing that hole shot. As we take a look out the backside there of Team Allen Lawn Care, you can see Killer B, nicest paint job on the, on the track right now. Yeah, beautiful boat, a Doug Wright performance as FJ Propeller now moves themselves into the lead. And there is WIA Insurance, and they're off to the right-hand side of Team Allen Lonker as Allen Lonker is going through the rooster tail of FJ Propeller. FJ Propeller is now heading into the first set of turns. WIA is on the inside. Team Allen Lonker goes a little bit, little bit across, forces WIA Insurance right through their rooster tail. So they didn't really give them a whole lot of room to go there as they went through the first stage of that turn and then managed to push everybody wide making it a one-way battle, and we go to our start in SBX. This is on board the father and son team, BoatFloater.com, and they are side-by-side -side with Sunprint. Look at the air they're getting on that back straightaway. Well, I'll tell you, the weather has once again gotten rough out here for uh, all of these drivers. You can see them getting a little sideways there, Martin. Yeah, we're on board the Hulk. You can see them twisting. That's Rob Nunziato and Dan Lawrence. They've been out of racing for a while. Welcome back. Out front right now, though, we have FJ Propeller followed by Allen Lawn Care, and we have the Hulk in third. But look, Performance Boat Center has just moved themselves past WIA. That's Rusty Walker, and he's in the boat with Myra Coyle, who just got out of the Super Cat. And they're currently running in fourth place. You see WI get a little bit loose. Well, I'll tell you, you could actually get a feel for how large that course is. And uh, you can see the weather conditions getting ready to change again. Oh, look at boat four. They're just laying that boat on the side. They are out front in the SVX class. That's the father and son team of Steve and Stephen Kildall. As we look at just how bumpy it is inside. Boy, that does not look like fun, Martin. Oh, that just <laughs> looks like it hurt. Even the facial expressions on their faces just tells you how bumpy that is. And look at all of these boats just flying through the air right here in the SVX class. Out front is BoatFloater.com. Second place is Sunprint. Let's move back over to your Superstock class where Team Allen Lawn Care, Larry and Billy, making it happen captain right now. Yeah, look at where those throttles are. He is not letting up at all. You can see how bumpy it is. The boat getting air. It kind of kind of corkscrews a little bit as it comes out, but he's doing a great job of keeping it level. Look at that one shot there. All three of those boats in the air at the same time as our super stock boats are getting ready to catch up to a Pro Stock V boat. That is the Showtime boat running at the back of the pack in Pro Stock V as we go back on board Allen Lawn Care. Hey, they are closing the gap right now on FJ coming up hard on the inside. You know, with flap traffic out there, that could be a factor as well. No doubt. FJ 
propellers is now trying to look in their mirrors and see what they can do to hold off Alan Longcare. Alan Longcare is going to come up on the inside. Let's see if FJ Propeller gives him a lane. FJ Propeller doesn't really have anywhere to go. He's getting squeezed to the inside by that Pro Stock B, and that forces Alan Longcare to go right through his rooster tail on the outside. But look, Alan Longcare was able to carry some speed. They now move out ahead of FJ Propeller. Well, I'll tell you what, they are riding on the edge of the envelope. Hopefully, they won't find that glue. Oh, boy, they are right at the edge, just standing that boat on its tail as Alan Longcare now moves into the lead as they go past the back marker right there. That is showtime. And that forces FJ Propeller to go to the inside of them. Alan Longcare swings a little bit wide, but they're carrying all that speed. Really didn't give that Pro Stock B anywhere to go. They got stuck in the double wake coming off the back of that catamaran. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to have been in showtime. That, that didn't look like a fun ride at all. Well, Alan Longcare is now solidly in the lead ahead of FJ Propeller, and they control the lane. Let's see if they return the favor and slam the door on FJ Propeller. They're heading to the west, getting ready for the long straightaway. And here we look at MRT Racing. They're kind of running in the middle of the pack in our Superstock class. Oh, Shadow Pirates down. They've got a problem. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're dead in the water. But uh, you got to wonder what's going on there. What happened underneath that uh, cowling? Still out front, Allen Lawn Care, and they are not letting up. They are just running that boat right on the edge. They want to stay out front. Performance Boat Center running in third place. Those boats related in a way that Performance Boat Center did all the rigging and putting together the Allen Lawn Care boat. So they're not too upset that that boat's out front, but I promise you, Myra Cole and Rusty want to be out front as Team Allen Lawn Care. You see the weather getting a little bit bad out there. The visibility is getting questionable. Not slowing them down, though. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's really looking dicey out there. Team Allen Lawn Care, though, no problems whatsoever. They're carving it up to date like a Thanksgiving Day turkey. You see how far he's got those throttles down. He's holding them down. You heard him say it's the last lap. And BoatFloater.com looks like they have just taken the win. You know, that father and son team, the 35th annual race here in Sarasota, they've raced every single time, and they took the win. Here we look at Alan Loncare. They are running towards the checkered flag as well. Still running that boat on kill. He's got the throttles pinned. Well, I'll tell you what, let the fireworks begin here in Sarasota because it's celebration time. There you go. There's the fist bump. They know they've won as they're coming across the start-finish line. The win goes to Allen Lawn Care. What a great race for those guys. And you talk about running it hard the whole way. Yeah, congratulations to your super stock champions as we go on board with them, Team Allen Lawn Care. Second place is going to go to FJ Propellers. And let's take a look at our results overall here for the Superstock race. The win goes to Allen Lawn Care, followed by FJ Propeller and Performance Boat Center. You obviously got the teamwork uh, slotted in together. It was just plain sailing out there? Yeah, it was a pretty good teamwork effort. I, I've run the boat about the best, uh, you know, the fastest we could get it going. And uh, Larry's come from the sprint cars. He was like, let's go any faster. I'm like, that's all we got. So we had a good day. We went real well. And Larry, what's the plans for tonight then? Probably get a shower, relax, and just uh, sleep good. Not even one glass of beer or champagne? A couple cigars, that's for sure. Best of luck. Thanks, lads. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look at the standings in Superstock after round four. Performance Boat Center is still out in the lead. FJ Propeller in second place, followed by Team Allen Lawn Care, Shadow Pirate, CR Racing, and Killer B. So congratulations to all of the guys that made it onto the podium there. But it is now time for the big one. It's the turn of these guys, the 160 mile per hour class ones. Currently leading the championship is that one just over there, Team Victory on 196 points, but not a million miles behind them, just on 186 points is that one just over there, Miss Geico. And that boat is being driven by James Shepard and Steve Curtis. Oh, I love Sarasota. This is, this is my uh, third Sarasota race. Yes, we arrived yesterday. Um, the team have uh, done a great job over the last few weeks um, following the last race. Um, everything's as good as it can be. I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, we've got a lot to do. You know, after we had a little issue in the um, Lake of the Ozarks, we've got to do to try and get into the lead. Um, we gained a second the lap before and a second the lap before that, so we were closing on them. And then we must have hit some driftwood or something and bent a propeller blade. And when that happens, you get a huge vibration through the boat. So we had to shut down. So we pulled it over and that was that. You know, we got third place points. We didn't get many points, but it put us back in the championship. You've got Sam and Daisy Coleman here running in P1 Superstock. They're, they're kind of like the junior boats sitting alongside this one. A good addition to the overall team? 
Yeah, fantastic. And they had a great race in St. Petersburg. I think they won four out of the five races or something. So they ran really good, had a real close one with another boat. So I think they're looking to, you know, do, do well again this season and keep the lead in the championship. Serafino, I understand that some guys around here might know you as Jimmy, and the guy that you got running alongside with you, Jimmy, is actually the main man of the whole event. We do. I have Smitty in the boat, who's a great driver. Um, we have so much fun in the cockpit. We both have a great sense of humor. We like to have fun. So it's serious racing, but it's also serious fun. That's what we're about, having a good time. Family, friends, fun. It's great to have the fans with us. Um, we had thousands of people autograph the boat last night at the block party. Um, which is fabulous, like children, grandmothers, everybody. It was just a good time. Salem Ali, great to see you here this weekend. You're currently leading the championship. You're on 196 points. Miss Geico are on 186 points. Do you think they're going to be your biggest competition this weekend? Uh, we are three boats uh, very close to each other. Uh, Victory, Miss Geico, and uh, 222 Offshore. So uh, it's going to be tough uh, rounds. It's going to be tough uh, championship. So we have to be uh, consistent and uh, finish every race uh, with a good uh, position. What's the uh, atmosphere like here with your team this weekend? Is everyone excited? Is everyone looking forward to the race? Yeah, it's uh, very excited to be to be win and uh, to be leading in the championship. Well, the Class 1 championship is certainly set to be a close one this year, and it's thanks in no small part to these things, twin Mercury 1100 racing engines that all of the boats are going to be running. So one of the concepts this year in the new Class 1 is to run parity and power, so everyone is running our engines on a spec basis. Well, we have data loggers in the boats, <coughs> and we're monitoring a bunch of engine parameters on each side, port and starboard. We have some redundant sensors on the engine that we also monitor. And then after practice and after the race, we download the data and look at it to make sure that what's coming out of the engines makes sense and that no one's tweaked on them and turned power up. The idea of class one now is that it's boat setup dependent. It's not who's got the most money to throw out an engine and, and have something that lasts for 10 minutes and blows up. What's the response from the teams been towards the new engines and towards the new uh, parity, if you like? Yep, so initially, I think, rightfully so, some teams were a little bit skeptical. Why is Mercury crawling around in my boat and putting these things in here? What are, what do they not trust that we're doing? And then as we explain what we're doing and we've shown them the kind of data we're generating, um, everyone is very cool with it now and they're very friendly. And I look forward to showing up to a race and getting invited in the trailer and chatting about how the race, last race win. And, what we've uh, got set up and what we learned since last time, because it's it's helping them and it's helping us. I mean, we're getting data on how the race customers truly run the product in a very detailed fashion with all the data off the data logger. And so it helps us to make a better engine and it helps to uh, help the race teams understand what issues they might have with integrating the engine in the boat. Um, particularly, everyone tries to run water pickups as high as they can and want to minimize drag on the boat. So we're always helping them find that edge between not enough water and overheating the engine. and too much that uh, they're slowing the boat down. Well, join us after the break when we'll be going racing at 160 miles per hour, but not on one of those. Welcome back to Sarasota, where you join me on the shoreline here at Lido Beach with the race course just somewhere out there behind me. And the Class 1 160 mile an hour boats are heading on out to the start line. So let's go join your race commentators, Mikey Young and Mine Sanborn. Let's take a look at the race course, 6.2 miles clockwise rotation. The start finish line right in front of the beach, a long straightaway between two and three, and a fairly sharp turn between three and four for that diagonal run back to the beach. These are the big boys, Class 1 USA. Yeah, you got Class 1 USA, you got the V Extreme, and we're just about ready to go green here in Sarasota. And we have one V-bottom running in the Class 1 USA as well. That's the Lucas Oil Boat. Triple two drew the inside lane. So they've got the short way around the race course, theoretically, when the green flag goes up. Onboard victory team, certainly one of the teams to watch as we're waiting for that green flag. 
Well, I'll tell you, it looks like things have calmed down again for uh, the big boats here, and that's great news for everybody that's watching along here from the beaches. Triple Two, our team from Australia, and we have a green flag there underway, and what a great hole shot for Victory. They jump out front of Triple Two. Triple Two on the inside, Victory now out to a two-boat length lead as they head toward the north end of the race course. Yeah, very nice hole shot there for Salim and his partner as uh, we take a look through the back of a uh, Triple Two offshore. Triple Two will have the inside as they go around that turn. There you see Geico in third place. Triple Two just getting as close to that mark as they possibly could. Victory team still way out front right now. They're making a great, great way around that race course. They go a little bit wide every time they leave. Triple Two plenty of time on the inside. Triple Two square in the turnoff, but they're not able to run down Victory. Yeah, you can see how tight he was to that buoy, not leaving the door open whatsoever. And Geico goes wide. They're still running in third place as we go on board with Scuderia Kazani. And hey, they're looking pretty casual there. They are, look really relaxed. In fact, there's a cooler right there. Why wouldn't she go boating in Sarasota on 4th of July weekend without a cooler? Hey, man, great idea, great idea. And that's a great shot of our top three coming down the front straight away. Victory out front, triple two on the inside. On the outside, that was Geico. Victory coming across. This has been the roughest part of the race course all day long, but it looks like it has indeed settled down as we go on board triple two. And you see that gap with Emma and Geico and that, that wake right off to their left hand side. That is from Victory team. Well, here we go around the turn. And again, Victory still up in front and uh, back in that second place. I believe it's still the triple two offshore. Geico in third as we go on board with Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil, the only V-bottom in Class 1 USA as we now go on board Scuderia Kazani. You can see he's got one engine and has a little bit more rooster tail than the other. That usually leads you to believe that they've got a problem going on right there. They're trying to get more RPM out of that one motor. As we go back to our lead battle right now, victory team here from the UAE, and Geico looks like they've gotten past triple two. Yeah, Geico uh, actually uh, here from the United Kingdom as well. So uh, we got five different countries represented out there this weekend. That is one of the great things about Class one USA these big class one boats are a, a big international following on these guys and we're glad to have them here running in the APBA OPA P1 series here in the US Martin tell me what kind of speeds are these guys getting out there well these boats are capable of speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour there you see that fire coming out of the exhaust that's what happens with the waste case when they back those throttles off back to our battle for second and third Geico running in second victory in first Well, right now we've got victory out front, but Geico is getting so aggressive going into the inside. They're slamming on the brakes late, getting around the turn on the inside, and they try to run them down on the diagonal. As we go back on board Scuderia Kazani, they are, they're doing great, but they still look like they've got a problem going on with that right side motor. Yeah, and meanwhile, with uh, that going on back there, the race is really heating up for first place. You, again, you can see Victory up in front, just off of their right is Geico. Geico trying to get that position. You know, Geico does really well on that back straightaway. They just dive into that back turn. They make up ground, but Victory clearly has some boat speed as they go around the beach side of the race course, and on that back straightaway, they hold them off. You know, I'll tell you, they are really letting it all hang out. Well, we're down to within two laps of the end of the race here as Victory Team out front there. They got clean water. Wait, the weather's cleared a little bit. The water's laid down a little bit. These guys are moving. Victory Team is out front. Geico in second place. And you see how close they're getting coming into the turns as Geico tries to take the inside line every time. All right, and I believe we're headed on to our final lap of the weekend here. And what a great weekend it has been here in Sarasota. And there's our leader in the V Extreme class. That was Team Instigator. And we have one other V bottom out there, the Hurricane of Awesomeness, rounding out our V Extreme classes right now. Once again, we have Victory Team coming on the diagonal towards the beach ahead of Geico. Geico on that inside lane. Keep in mind, these boats are running upwards of 150 miles an hour right now as they come towards the beach. Boy, I'll tell you, Geico really trying to sneak it in there. And we'll see if uh, they can do that. Again, came all the way over from the United Kingdom as we go back on board with Scuderia Kazani. Victory team has opened up a little bit more of a margin on that straightaways. It looks like they're getting ready to put Lucas Oil down a lap. Look at that. He just closed the door on him. Victory didn't give him anywhere to go. Geico had to go through the rooster tail as we go back on board with Lucas Oil. Yeah, Lucas Oil, you can see him bouncing around out there, uh, riding in the chop of uh, these top three boats. They're about to get put down a lap by Victory team. Victory coming by on the inside of Lucas Oil. But Geico got forced to go through the rooster tail at that turn, so they're on the outside. Back on board with Scuderia Kazani. And again, you can just see how much they're bouncing around inside that canopy. 
You know, it's definitely a little more calm than it was earlier in the day. And once again, victory team holds them off. Triple two still in the background there running in third place. Well, I'll tell you, third place, a good position to be in if something happens up there in the top two, and the top two really pressing each other right now. Well, they know that they're coming up towards a white flag lap, and they are they're absolutely running it hard, and I would expect to see Geico run as hard as they can possibly run this lap. You know, if there's only a couple more laps to go, you really do not have time to play games. You've got to get on it. You've got to push the thing to the limits. As we go on board Triple Two Offshore, they're currently running in third place, but really the battle right now is for the lead between Victory and Geico, and we are on the white flag lap. Boy, I'll tell you, they are throttling down there in Victory, and you can see not leaving any room there, not leaving the door open for Geico to sneak back in. Yep, Geico, they take that inside lane but they have to go through and then they have to come back on the inside now geico's running right to the inside of the wake they are on the back straightaway this is the final lap geico trying to run them down let's see if they put the brakes on late getting into the turn and try to close the gap victory through the turn geico goes through oh, oh. geico hooked it geico hooks and fl flips the boat over you saw the canopy flying away that was the engine hatch and victory team whoa victory whoa. team goes over too Victory team didn't have anything in front of them. They just kind of slow roll over, but Geico hooked it and they snap rolled hard on the last lap. Wow, that was absolutely crazy. I, I'm not sure what happened there with Victory. Why Victory went over, you could see that Geico kind of hooked it as they were going through the chop. They went right through the rooster tail. Let's take a look at it again. You see Geico going through the rooster tail and they skip across the wake. The wake transitions over the bow. They hook that outside sponson and the boat violently snap rolls. That's a piece of the engine hat flying away and wow what a rough ride for Geico and let's look at what happened to victory team they just look like they're going around the turn and they just overturn and the boat just slow rolls over at least that one's a nice general roll that's not hard on the boat what happened to Geico that's hard on the boat wow wow well tough break there for victory and for Geico as uh, we're cleaning up the yard sale well, this makes it a challenge for final results, but let's see how it shook out. After scoring, Triple Two takes the win. Lucas Oil comes in in second. Third place goes to victory and fourth to Geico. Darren, Geo, that was uh, quite some end to a race. I mean, what happened uh, ahead of you on that final couple of corners? I bet you couldn't have predicted it. No, not at all. We uh, seen the big splash and we thought, gosh, Geico's gone over. And two seconds later, just a little bit in front, victory's rolled over. So, uh, no, you couldn't script it, that's for sure. What we saw is that uh, they push really hard in the tour, maybe too much, because uh, I know very well that kind of boat. They give you right, they give you right, and then they give you wrong. So Nigel, an interesting end to the class one race there, but you've been around boat racing long enough to know that these things can happen, and you know, to finish first, first you've got to finish. Well, you know, it just goes to show this is an incredibly exciting sport, because who would imagine this would have happened, right? Rather than be in the last lap, essentially. So, yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, you never know in the water. It's, it's uh, anyone's game, right? I mean, the, uh, the, the victory boat uh, and the uh, Geico boat ran fantastically, right? But it's, uh, you're on the edge out there, and sometimes you catch it. Yeah, and I'm guessing as the race goes on, the boat gets a bit lighter and you're pushing a bit harder. You've still got to keep your head. You do, and it's uh, as much as it's um, a sprint race, you, uh, it's also an endurance race, and it's very unusual, and it's what makes the sport so exciting. Yeah, and just a quick word about the sport, Nigel, as well. It is good this year because the number of Class 1 boats involved has just made it a great spectacle. Well, it has. It's international, truly glo global, right, where the guys over there, Giovanni from Italy and, and Darren from Australia. you got, of course, Iser and Salim from the Middle East. I mean, and, uh, well, of course, Steve Curtis and James Shepard from England, right? So it's, uh, in fact, Jay is the only American-born racer in the class. Actually, I take, because Jimmy, but Jimmy also? Yep. Oh, no, Smitty. Smitty, Smitty, Smitty. Jimmy and Smitty yeah. now too. Smitty, Smitty yeah. probably too. But you're almost outnumbered, Jay. Yeah. I am, and they might be a little older than me, I think. <laughs> At least I'm saying that. Salem, another Sarasota Grand Prix comes to an end. Safety was the winner here. You both walked out. Uh, thanks God we are all uh, okay, both of us. Uh, this is racing. This is uh, you have to deal with this. Yeah. Sometimes it's happening. It's under. Uh, it's not uh, under your hand. So you have to keep going. Remove the past and keep going. Thinking about the uh, next uh, round. Let's take a look at our standings here for the APBA OPA Championship Series. Miss Geico out front, victory in second, triple two in third. 
So sadly, another Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix comes to a close, but oh boy, did it finish in spectacular style. Good news was all of those teams there from Geico and the victory team got out and are going home safely. Safety was the winner then, so was entertainment, and so were all of the charities that are supported by this event. It was phenomenal. The 35th year the event has been going, a record number of entries and action all the way. I'm booking my seat on the plane for next year. I hope you will be too. Until then, from all of us here, see ya.